Hello, and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics, and for this video, finite mathematics. The topic of this video is taught in both stats and finite math, so you may be watching this video in a stats playlist or a finite math playlist, but either way it applies to both. Now just a reminder, these videos are geared towards individuals who are relatively new to stats, or finite math for that matter, so I'll just be covering the very basics with examples. And finally, if you're watching this video because you're having problems in one of your classes, I want you to stay positive and keep your head up. Hopefully this video and other videos will help you work through those problems because you're smart and you're talented and I know that. So stay positive and keep working at it, you'll get through it. So all that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. Now in my last video, I did a basic comparison of combinations and permutations. So in this video, we're going to focus on permutations, what they are, how we calculate them, and then an example or two. So here is an introductory example. And again, this is sort of pulled from my last video, but we'll talk about it more in depth in terms of permutations. So you decide you would like to place a bet at a horse racing track. And FYI, I do not gamble for personal reasons, so no questions about gambling. I won't answer them. But there are 10 horses in this race. Now you want to place a bet on the top three horses in exact order. So you're going to pick the first place horse exactly, the second place horse exactly, and the third place horse exactly. So the question is, how many unique one, two, three finishes are there in a race involving 10 horses that you could potentially bet on? And you have to not only get the three horses correct, you have to get their exact place correct. And the answer is, there are 720 unique one, two, three finishes if there are 10 horses in the race. Now, I'm not going to go through all those, of course, because there are 720 of them. But just keep in mind that even if the same three horses finish in different orders, that doesn't count. They have to be in the exact order, one, two, three. So the questions are, how many different ways can three horses finish one, two, three, which we just did? How many unique three horse finishing orders can be listed when choosing from 10 horses. So each different finishing list is an individual outcome. So if we have horses one, two, and three finish that way, let's say it finishes horse two, one, and three. That's different. If it's horse three, two, and one, that's different. Even though it's the same three horses, each one of those unique ordered lists is a different permutation. So more generally, if we have 10 different options to choose from, how many unique ordered lists of three can we make from the 10? And of course it was 720. And finally, once the outcomes are analyzed, what probability can we assign to each finishing order? So in this example, there are 720 possible unique one, two, three finishes out of 10 horses. So if you bet on just one of them, the odds of winning are, you know, the probability of winning is one out of 720. Now let's just review the importance of counting here. Why do we do this? Now, of course, counting sounds simple, we begin counting at a very young age. It just sort of comes natural to us as we grow up. But in stats and finite math, counting assumes an important and complex role. So we have to go beyond our normal conceptions of simple counting. The probability of an event or outcome is central to a large portion of stats and finite math. And I forgot to mention, a lot of the things we count and stats and finite math are just beyond what we could do by hand or in our head. Because a lot of these experiments and things like that have a tremendous number of outcomes, 
or it's a combination of outcomes. So there'll be questions that involve multiple permutations, like in two steps, or there might be a question that has a permutation as part of it and then a combination as another part, or a question that has two combinations as part of it. So these problems can become very complex, but we have to have the tools and mechanisms to do this sort of counting. So probability by definition is the frequency at which some event happens out of a greater number of outcomes. And that should make sense. So to find these probabilities, we have to be able to count in complex ways, and, oft and oftentimes multiple step ways. So again, I mentioned problems that might have multiple steps that require different countings, or what I call nested combinations. So it's kind of a combination or a permutation within another combination or permutation. So if we cannot count, we cannot find probabilities. It's just that simple. So in order to do more advanced work in finite math and stats, we have to be able to do this counting. So that's why we're learning it. So let's talk about another example, our investment selections from the previous video. There are 30 stocks in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. That's probably what you see in the news every day. Over the next six months, you decide to invest $1,000 in a different stock each month. So next month, you're going to invest in a stock out of the 30. The next month, you'll invest in the stock. The next month, the stock, and so on until you've invested for six months. Now the question is, how many investment lists could be made? And that is the order of investments to be made over time. So, in the first month, I'm going to have 30 choices. In the second month, I will have 29 choices, because I already made one in the first month. In the third month, I'll have 28 choices, and so on and so forth. So you can see the order matters. So again, first month we have 30, next month 29, etc. So what is this? So this is a permutation of 30 and 6. Well, that comes out to 427,518,000 different permutations. If we are selecting six stocks from the 30 in unique orders, that's a lot of different orders. So over 420 million <laughs> different unique lists of six stocks. It's quite tremendous. All right, so let's talk about a formal definition. It's just the number of different ways that a certain number of objects can be placed in order from a larger number of n objects. So we have a large group of objects, and then we say, hey, let's take, um, you know, let's say we have 10 objects and we want to take five of them. How many different ways can we arrange those five items in different orders? So there are n objects. How many different order lists can we make of size r? And that's the more abstract definition. Now how do we write that? There are several ways to write this, but I'm going to stick with the one I'm familiar with and we use in finite math. So we have a p for permutations and then n, which is our total number of objects or events or whatever. And then R is the subgroup of that we're interested in. So we could have 10 comma 5, we could have 20 comma 13, it doesn't matter. Just remember that N is the overall total and R is the size or the length of the list we're making in this permutation. So for our horse bedding example, we have N and R is 10. We have 10 total horses and we're interested in three of them. So we can make 720 different lists of three horses. We could go 1, 2, 3. We could go 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 6, 1, 2, 7. As you can see, we could go on for a very long time. But each one of those individual lists is an individual unique order and there are 720 of those. For investment selections, we have 30 and 6. And again, that's 427,518,000, I forgot a zero there, uh, different permutations. 
So here's our formula to figure this out if you wanted to by hand. Okay, and that looks kind of crazy, but don't freak out. It's actually not that hard. So our permutation is a fraction where on the top we have n factorial, and I'll explain what that is in a minute if you're not sure, divided by n minus r factorial. And of course the n and r actually come from the problem over there on the left hand side. So remember that n is the number of things to make lists about. R is the number of things listed. It's the length of our ordered list or our ordered list size. And remember the exclamation point is just factorial. So for example, five factorial is five times four times three times two times one. That's what a factorial is. So you just substitute those numbers into that equation above. So a horse race outcome, here's our formula. And remember we had 10 total horses and we're interested in lists of size three. So three horses per list. So that's 10 factorial on top divided by n minus r, which is 10 minus three factorial. So we end up with 10 factorial divided by seven factorial. And when we do all this out, this is what it actually looks like. So the 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, etc. 7 factorial is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4, etc. Of course, if you remember from uh, middle school or elementary school, we can cancel out everything that's common on the top and bottom of our fraction. So we can actually cross out the 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 on the top and bottom. So what are we left with? Well, we're left with 10 times 9 times 8. And of course, that's our answer of 720. So we've just, we've just done one by hand that's pretty simple. Of course, when the numbers get bigger, it's harder to do in your head, um, which we'll talk about in the next slide. Okay, so we have uh, 10 and 3 in our permutation. There are 10 horses, and we want to select the number of 1, 2, 3 exact finishes. How many unique ordered lists of three are possible out of 10? So let's go ahead and show you how to do this uh, in the calculator here. Okay, so we enter 10, go up to the math button, then scroll over to the right to the PRB menu for probability. Then we can scroll down or select two, that's our permutation, NPR, 3, hit enter, and there we go. So 720. That's how you would calculate that on the calculator. Now here's another one. This is what I call the insane lottery. So in a move to collect more money from its citizens without calling it an actual tax, a state comes up with the insane lottery. This is my idea, by the way. The state will hold this lottery once every 10 years. That's it. Once every 10 years. And people can buy virtual tickets, they'll be all electronic, over that time period. So individuals, people, of course, can buy tickets over a 10 year span at any time or as many times as they want, and the lottery will be held every 10 years. There's a catch though. Not only do you have to select the correct six numbers, you also have to correctly choose the order in which they exit the lotto machine. If you do that, you win. So, not only do you have to get the correct six numbers, you have to get the correct six numbers in the order they come up the tube or however it's done in the lotto machine. So the question is, how many possible outcomes does this lottery have? So what are the total number of possibilities you could actually bet? Well, this is 52, six is a permutation. It is 1.47 times 10 to the 10th in scientific notation, or if my notation's correct, 
658,134,400 different ways you could play that lottery. So over 14.6 billion ways. Now, of course, the number of people playing that lottery over 10 years, the, the jackpot is probably going to be quite large. So even though there are 14.6 billion possibilities, you still might win a large sum. So that is my insane lottery. Now remember, in a regular lottery, you pick the six numbers, but the order doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter at all. So I think in that case, there's around 20-something billion, sorry, 20-something million different outcomes. But because the order matters, in this case, we have, you know, 14 billion. All right, let's just wrap it up. So remember, a permutation is the number of different ways that a certain number of objects can be placed in order from a larger number of objects. And the keyword there is order. So if there are n objects, how many different ordered lists can we make of size r? And that's our notation. So just think about the examples I gave you here. We had the horses. So we could pick a group of three horses and not really care what order they finish in. Well, that's a combination. But if we want to pick the exact order, that's a permutation. So if we're doing a combination, if the horse is 1, 2, 3, finished in any order, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 3, 2, 1, whatever, it wouldn't matter. That would be a win. But in a permutation, they would have to finish in the exact order we choose. So if we went to the window and bet that horses 2, 1, 3 would finish in that order, that's the only thing that would win. 1, 2, 3 wouldn't win. 3, 2, 1 wouldn't win. Only 2, 1, 3, which we bet on. And then, of course, the lottery, the crazy lottery example I just gave you. In a normal lottery, the order doesn't matter. It's just six numbers chosen out of the 52. The order they come out of the machine makes no difference. But if we do something crazy and say that the order matters, they come out of the machine, you can see we have many, many more possibilities that you could place your bet on. So that's why I made it 10 years. So, so the jackpot would be worthy of the number of possible outcomes. And then, of course, we did the investment example. Just remember the keyword here is ordered list. The actual order or arrangement in which these things happen matter. So think of examples where it doesn't matter and think of examples where it does matter and where the order does matter, that's a permutation. All right, so that wraps up our video on the basic concept of permutations. So again, in the previous video, I talked about combinations and permutations as a comparison, so you could see the difference. In this one, we just focused on the basics of permutations, uh, several examples on how they work. Uh, we learned how to actually calculate them by hand if you'd like to, and I showed you how to calculate them on an actual TI calculator. Okay, so just remember, if you're having problems in a class, I want you to stay positive, stay strong, keep your head up. You can get through it with the right amount of hard work and resourcefulness, and I have faith in you. So all that being said, Let's go ahead and finish up this video. I look forward to seeing you again next time.